I would like to invite the fellow initiate to tell us about her experiences. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the manager in a local bank. As a Kwanin initiate, I'm very happy tonight to be given the opportunity to share my experiences with you. I'll touch on how being on this path has made a difference to my family life and cite instances where my inner meditative encounters have left an indelible mark on me. I was initiated in Taiwan. During initiation and while in meditation, I was suddenly bombarded by a strong pulsating light aimed at my third eye. I had to steal myself as the force was so strong and overwhelming. In fact, I thought that I was about to topple backwards. The light seemed endless. I heard beautiful sounds, one after another, as if playing a melody of its own. My husband and I enjoy a close relationship. Now I'd like to relate my experience, which helped me understand the basis for this close closeness. One night, after a good meditation session, while lying down, I found myself transported back into what seemed like the Middle East during medieval times. As if looking into a crystal ball, I saw a sword-wielding man with a prominent moustache, whom I knew intuitively as my husband. Following these, the scene changed quickly, and I found myself looking at what seemed to be ancient China. This I know to the garb of the man. This time, it was a scholarly-looking man with the same trademark. He had a prominent moustache. If you look at my husband today, you'll notice his moustache. He has the bearing of a Chinese scholar and a fondness for swords. It seemed as if my meditation has allowed me to see into the past. And now I understand that the continuation of our relationship has been through many lifetimes. On other occasions, while lying down after meditation, I felt my body grew lighter and the room lost its validity and became ephemeral. In the next instant, I was catapulted into this long, bright tunnel. At the end of it, I found that I have arrived in a strange land, all peaceful and quiet. I had also the opportunity to fly in what seemed to be a flying carpet to see strange cities, to all white and glowing. I sense a profound peace there. There are many more instances in which the blessing of the Master has been keenly felt by both myself and my family, but I will not dwell on them because it will take too long. Suffice to say that on this path, we are, both, we are blessed with both outer and inner experiences. Master's power indeed works in mysterious way beyond our human intellect. I'd like to sincerely thank Master Zheng Hai for initiating me and my family. Thank you. Thank you so much for everything. Flower, fruit, cakes for yourself. <laughs> And thank you for the beautiful dance. Are they all from Malaysia? Singapore, really. Nice. How are you? You comfortable? Yeah? Okay. It's beautiful in Singapore, anyhow. No complaint. The weather is so fine. Just perfect. And you like to dance, huh? You do? Ah. I didn't know Singapore people can dance so nice like that. <laughs> the only time I saw Singapore people dance uh, last time, there was some, something like a workout time, uh, Singapore, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> and they were wearing short pants <laughs> and sweating. <laughs> and I thought it was very nice already. I didn't think it could be so nice like this. Before I came to the lecture, some mysterious angel without wings, bought me some clothes, you know, like 
one similar to the dancers, you know. Uh, and they expressed the wish that I should wear them, because uh, here uh, the Malaysian people wear like that. Yes. I said, I thought I'm in Singapore. <laughs> I said, oh, yeah, but, but we are Malaysian here. You wear Malaysian clothes and people will like it better. I said, sure, sure, I would like to. I'd love to do that. And to make sure that I know how to wear, you know, because there's hat and cap and all this kind of thing. They even bought me a big book of catalog, you know, all different design for marriage couples. <laughs> and they are all so beautiful. When I look at the catalog, I thought, wow, this is beautiful. I would like to wear too. And uh, just to make uh, people feel also closer to me, <laughs> that I'm one of you. Okay, I tried on to please you, so you know my size pretty well. Now, they bought me a, perhaps queen size clothes, you know. <laughs> I don't know if the Malaysian don't make a smaller size or what. So they bought me the bottom and the top, okay. The bottom is so long, so when I put them on, I look like those uh, scarecrow <laughs> on, the, on the field, you know. <laughs> and then the, the top, when I put them on, because the shoulder pads so big and so large, I look like a mushroom. <laughs> oh, so I thought, what can I do now? <laughs> Even if to please the Malaysian people, <laughs> I cannot go on like that. <laughs> because I look at the catalog, they look so beautiful. And when I look at myself, I thought, no, if I wear it like this, I will risk to damage the reputation of Malaysian custom. So I thought I better just, uh, just wear this. So what do you want to hear? We could just sit together like this and <laughs> stare at each other, you know. <laughs> People do that. <laughs> People do that when they first fall in love, don't they? <laughs> first time they met each other, they just stare at each other like that. And after marriage, ten years, they stare also, but different direction. <laughs> When I see you, I forget everything. <laughs> That's the trouble. It's not the first time you see me, no? Hmm? First time? Yes, no. No. I came here two times before. No? Nobody saw me before? Somebody see me before? Raise their hands. Yeah, of course, of course. Uh, our friends. <laughs> We have been uh, seeing each other many times. Mm? And you know, I love Singapore mm. because of the reclaimed land. <laughs> it's unique. <laughs> when we were driving on the way here, it's uh, wonderful to feel that before it's supposed to be a sea, and now, due to the cleverness of the Singapore people, you can drive on top of the water. Yeah. So who say that we don't have magical power? Mm. The Singapore people do, they must. <laughs> Otherwise they don't have enough land. <laughs> and I think it's fantastic that you, after sowing all the mountains down, <laughs> you even <laughs> dig the ocean and make it uh, a highway, you know. <laughs> this is fantastic. And I was saying to uh, our friend who drives the car that uh, it's okay to be small, like me. <laughs> because we were talking of a big country, yeah? And uh, I said, oh, Singapore is beautiful. It's small, it's, it's beautiful. And he said something like, we try to expand, you know, to make it bigger. Just like this afternoon when I tried the Malaysian outfit, I tried to expand myself, <laughs> to fit into it. <laughs> And so we were talking about the country, country size, and I say, no, maybe Singapore is small, that's why it's easy to govern, and that's why you develop so fast, and it's the envy of uh, many nations. So we should